Today we're going to talk about a subject that's a little bit more basic, but might be difficult for some people, and that's file and printer sharing in Windows. Stay tuned. Now, you might ask yourself, file sharing? That's easy. Why would I want to watch a video about sharing files in Windows? Well, I would say for two reasons. For one, it might not be easy for everyone, and there might be people out there that simply don't know how to share files between multiple Windows computers, or don't even know that it's a thing they could do. And second, there's always different ways to do things, especially in Windows. So you might pick up some tips that you didn't know, but either way, that's what we're gonna talk about today. But first, I got some bills to pay. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now, today I'm gonna to show you two different ways to share folders between different Windows systems. The first method that I'm gonna show you is how to share folders using Windows authentication. This means that the person that wants to open your share folder will have to have your Windows username and password. And the second method that I'm gonna show you is just how to share folders without any authentication at all. That means if you're in a private network and you don't wanna to have to deal with any usernames and passwords, you can just share their folders with whoever's on the network. Now, let's jump on the computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here we are in Windows 10. This is where our files are gonna be stored that we wanna share with another Windows computer. So the first thing that we need to do is actually have some files to share. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder here. And we're just gonna call this folder share for right now. Now you can do this with any folder on your system. You can even share your documents folder if you wanted to. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is right click on this folder and go down to properties. And from properties, we wanna click on the sharing tab right here. So that's pretty obvious, but once we get to the sharing tab, I typically don't use this right here. I go to advanced sharing at the bottom and you click on that and it'll open this other window. And all we're gonna to have to do is hit share this folder. And right here, you can specify the name you want the share to be called. Now I'm just gonna leave mine share, but you can change this to anything that you want. And then also, while you're here, go down into permissions down here. Now, right here, we only have read access. So what we're gonna wanna do is change this to full control. If you don't change this to at least change and read, then even if someone has authentication to be able to log on, they'll only be able to actually read the files that are in the folder. They won't actually be able to change them or put anything else new in there. So I typically set this to full control and then go ahead and hit okay, and then go ahead and hit okay again. And then at this point, you can just go ahead and close this. So now that we have our share set, up, there's a couple other things that we need to check on. The first one you're going to want to do is go ahead and click on start and open up settings. And then from settings, you want to go into user accounts. And then from your user account, as you can see, I'm using a local account and it's an administrator account. And then from this point, we want to go right here to where it says sign in options. And we want to make sure that our computer has a password because since we're going to be using Windows authentication to access the share, obviously, we're gonna need a password. So from this point, we're gonna go ahead and hit add, and I'm gonna add a password. So for mine, I'm just gonna add, my password is just gonna be password. So go ahead and add your password. And then for password hint, we'll do one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit next and hit finish. And now my account has a password and my password is in fact password. I don't recommend using that as a regular password, but for the purposes of this video, that'll work great. So while we're in settings, we wanna go ahead and click on home and we wanna go into our system tab and then go down all the way down to about. And what you wanna look at is the device name. Now you're gonna to wanna to make note of this device name. If you've never changed this before, it'll probably say something like desktop dash with a bunch of random numbers. I would name it something a little bit more recognizable. I named my system here Cyber CPU, but if yours isn't named the way that you want it to be named, then all you have to do is go down and click on rename this PC 
and type the new name in right there and hit next. Now you will have to restart the computer for the new name to take effect, but once it's restarted, we can move on to the next step. So now that you got your shared folder configured, now we need another system that we can share that folder with. And unfortunately, I only have one computer here. So let's fix that. Now, I just have to start out with a little plug because I kind of screwed up big time. When I was looking for another computer to do this video, I was originally going to use my notebook until I found this little geek on mini PC that I was supposed to do a review on and I kind of never did. So I would like to just apologize to Geekom for not doing the original review I was supposed to, but at least giving them a plug for sending me this system that we're using in this video. This is a 12th generation i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. It's got a 512 gig SSD. And as you can see, it comes in a pretty small package. It includes Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, and it also comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. Unfortunately though, the i7 version of this little computer here, I couldn't find available anymore. But there is an i5 version of this exact same computer available on Amazon for under 500 bucks. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below for it. So I just want to say thank you Geekom for providing the system for this video and sorry I never got a full review out for it. Now let's jump on this system here and I'll show you how to map the share that we just created on our other system. Now, as you can see, we're on Windows 11 now, and I wanted to use two different versions of Windows just to make this a little easier. And then also I can show you some of the differences between Windows 10 and 11 while we're sharing files between the two. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is go ahead and click on our file explorer and then go down to this PC. And as you can see, all we have is our C drive here, and we're gonna go ahead and map the share from the other computer onto this one. And to do that, what we wanna do is click on these three little dots right here, and then from there, we want to go to map network drive and it should give us this window here. So what we want to type is two backslashes and essentially just like the example right here, we have the server and the share. Well, we know that that computer's name is cyber CPU. And that's the reason why I told you, you should use a pretty simple name to make it easy to call on the computer from your network settings here. But we're going to type in cyber CPU. And then we're going to do another backslash and we're going to type in share. Now, once we do that, we click on finish and then it's going to ask us a username and password. And the username and password for this one is going to be the username and password for the computer that the share is on. So for username, we're going to type in rich because that's my username on the other computer. And then for the password, as you guys remember, we just made the password password. And then what you can do is you can check right here where it says, remember my credentials. And by checking that you'll never have to enter them again. However, I'm not going to do that right now because after I show you how to use credentials, I'm going to show you how to do this without any. So I want to show you that it does still work in the other direction as well. So for right now, I'm going to not, I'm not going to say, remember my credentials. I'm just going to go ahead and hit okay. And here's our folder. So now if we right click here, we can go ahead and create Say we'll create a text document here and in that text document we'll write, it works. And then from there we can go ahead and save that text document and we'll go ahead and look at it on the other computer once we move over to it. Okay, so now that we've successfully shared files, now let me show you how to set it up with no username and password. So we need to move back over to the original computer to change some settings. So let's get to it. Okay, so now that we're back on the original computer, we can go ahead and close this here. Now, if we open up our share folder, as you can see, our new text document that says it works is in the folder. So clearly it does in fact work. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we wanna go down to our network icon here. We wanna right click on it and we wanna hit open network and internet settings. And then from there, we wanna click on the network and sharing center. And then from there, this gives us our old fashioned network and sharing center. On Windows 11, this is gonna be a little bit different, but I'll go ahead and show you that once we get to Windows 11. So now the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is as you can see, this is currently set to a public network and yours might be that way as well. And if it is, it's really easy to fix. We wanna be on a private network in order to do this. So to do that, you wanna go back into your settings and right here is where your network settings are. It should still be open if you didn't close it when you went to the network and sharing center. So we wanna flip over to ethernet. Now, if you're using Wi-Fi, obviously you'll do this from Wi-Fi. But for me, I'm using ethernet so that's 
that's the way we're doing it. So go ahead and click on the connection. And then from there, you'll see that here's where it says public or private. We just want to flip this over to private. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and close the settings window. And then now, as you can see, our network is now a private network. Okay, so now we need to move on to the next step. And that's right here. Go to change advanced sharing settings. And then from there, we want to turn on file and print sharing. Now, obviously, we're already violent using file and print sharing the way it was but for the next step you're going to want to make sure to turn this on if you have any problems with the previous step then you might want to try to turn this on as well i probably should have done that in the last step but you know we live and learn so the next thing is is go down right here where it says all networks and go ahead and open that up and we want to change two settings here right here we want to turn on sharing with anyone that has network access so go ahead and click on that and then we want to click on turn off password protected sharing and then once we do that, we can go ahead and click save changes and then we can move on to the next step. And that's essentially, we're going to go ahead and close this window. We're going to go to our share. We're going to right click and we're going to go back to the properties in our share. And then from here, where we want to go is onto the security tab. And then from there, as you can see, the security is for system me, obviously, or other administrators on the computer. So we want to add another user to, that has access to this group. And that's essentially everyone. So to do that, we want to go ahead and we want to click the edit button from there we want to click add and then we want to push on the advanced button and then push find now and this will give you a whole list of users for the that are on the computer and we want to go down right here to where it says everyone go ahead and hit ok hit ok again and then we're going to go ahead and click full control and then hit ok again and then at this point it should work the way that we want it to we can go ahead and hit ok Okay, so we got those settings changed and now the file shares on this system should be accessible from this system without a username and password. So let's jump back on it and see if it works. Okay, so now that we're back on Windows 11 here, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this share right here. And then I'm gonna change a couple settings within Windows 11 here, just to kind of show you where we're going at here. So the first setting that we're gonna change is we're gonna go ahead and come down into our network icon. We're gonna right click and we're gonna hit network and internet settings. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than Windows 10 because you know, Windows 11 is starting to disable some of the old settings menus from Control Panel and especially the Network and Sharing Center. So to do this, essentially what we have to do is we got to go ahead and make sure that we're on a private network and not a public network. Now on this one, this is using Wi-Fi. So in order to do that, we got to go ahead and click on our Wi-Fi connection right here. And then from here, we want to go into our connection properties, which is right here. It essentially, yes, my wireless is called It Hurts When IP. The It Hurts When IP is the name of my wireless. This is gonna be different on your wireless. So go ahead and click on that. And then from there, you'll see where it says public or private. We wanna make sure that it's on a private network. And at this point, we can click back to network and internet. And then from here, we wanna go down to advanced network settings all the way down to the bottom. And then we wanna click on advanced sharing settings. And then from there, there's a couple of settings that we need to change in here. The first one is gonna to be to turn on file and printer sharing. And that's gonna be right here. So this is the same one that we flipped over on the other computer. And this one you might need to do like we did in the first one. Now, from this point, we wanna click on all networks right here. And then the same thing as before, we wanna to go to public folder sharing, Go ahead and turn that on. And we want to turn off password protected sharing just like that. And then at this point, we can go ahead and close our settings and open our file explorer again. And from here, we want to click on these three dots. You want to go down to map network drive. And then the same as before, we're going to go backslash backslash cyber CPU backslash share. And then go ahead and hit finish and it should connect without a password. And there you go. And you can even go through and you can create new folders or new documents on the share without having any passwords. Now, if you run into any problems with this, or for whatever reason, if it still requires a password, then try to restart both computers and that should solve the problem. It might actually have the authentication for the share cached and if that's the case, then you can go ahead and restart the systems and hopefully that fixes the problem. There are certain instances where you can run into problems with Windows file sharing. And unfortunately, that's some troubleshooting for another video. So as you can see, both processes are pretty simple. I would just make sure to only use the method where no authentication is required if you don't have any problem with anyone else on your local networking having access to your file shares.
I mean, if there's any possibility that someone could at some point be on your network that you wouldn't want to have access, then it's a really good idea to use authentication for your file shares, especially considering the fact that you can save the network password on the system that you want to have access to, to the file shares, of course. So ultimately, in practice, both methods will give you the same results. Once you save the username and password for the file share, you'll be able to access that file share from pretty much whenever you want without a password. It will simply limit the ability for other people on the network to have access to your file shares without your permission. Now, whichever method you decide to use is entirely up to you and dependent on who else is on your network. I set both of these methods up all the time. If I have a customer that just wants a simple file share and doesn't want to deal with passwords, then I'll set it up the way that they want. But if, they're, if they have a public Wi-Fi, then I would highly recommend against it. Because you know, security in Windows is important and that includes file shares. So it's always best to require a username and password for a file share, but it's not necessary. If you'd like to see other ways that you can secure a Windows PC, then check out this video where I talk about basic security tips and best practices for Windows PCs. And as always, you guys have a great day.